Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars Colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode, we are launching our first Sajita Heavy with six boosters. I probably won't do this again because it causes a lot of lag. The six boosters each have parachutes and little Pac-Man encapsulation devices and separatrons and such. So uh, more parts than are strictly necessary and uh, yeah, uh, probably this is the last time you'll see this. But I decided to try it out and we are carrying supplies for our supply vessel so the supply vessel is mostly well i think it's completely assembled except for the little truss part which we are also carrying up here which will help connect the tug and um, so this is just the food water oxygen lithium hydroxide nitrogen and a little bit of hydrazine for evas it should be enough supplies for for two years and 270 days was the goal and that's for full mars mission uh, in theory, we're just going to park this around Mars, and so if they need it, they can access it potentially, and that'll be that. Of course, it also carries fuel if they need that as well. So there go the boosters, and we are on our way. The fairings are about to separate, and you'll see that we're also carrying the second tug. Each of these vessels uses two tugs. One with the round port on the center and one with the diamond port on the center. And so we're carrying the second tug along with a truss part. Uh, ironically, we had already carried the little truss adapter for this tug to the station. And this time we're carrying the truss adapter for the tug that's already there. And there the launch script had a little bit of an error. I think uh, what happens is that um, it sometimes has to do a calculation based on the thrust of the stage and when the thrust goes to zero if the thrust of the stage in that calculation is in the denominator it uh, produces an infinity now i've already got a check that says only do this calculation if the ship max thrust is greater than one right i mean to avoid the infinity but if it checks that condition and then before it gets to the next line in the code the engine shut down then it produces the error. And I haven't quite figured out how to stop that. Uh, so even though I have that conditional check to prevent the infinity from happening, uh, if it just happens in that split second, uh, you know, it's only a fraction of a second amount of time uh, where, you know, it would be able to make that calculation when the engine shut down. But sometimes it does. So then you get the error. I mean, the script should be running through these very quickly. So... Uh, but still it manages to happen sometimes. Anyway, our Sajita upper stage has done its job here, bringing us closer to our supply vessel. This is the one with the nuclear reactor currently on it. And here the tug brings its truss, well not its truss, the truss it's carrying over to that tank there. These trusses are necessary so that the engines on the tugs can be used as the orbital maneuvering system for the ship, right? Right now, it has ED3 engines, which are tiny. They're only like 1.6 kilonewtons or something like that. And the engines on the tugs are each 15 kilonewtons. And they each have four of them. So that's altogether a possible 120 kilonewtons. And we would like to use that. <laughs> so... Um, the trusses allow that adaptation. They're not very heavy. Now you'll notice that the video is fairly short and that's because I took a long time doing things because there's a lot of docking in this video and more docking than there strictly should have been because I made a couple of mistakes later on when we're dealing with the main ship, the Mars transfer vehicle. But there are also all sorts of other little dockings like here I need to move this particular tug over to where it'll eventually be perched on that truss so that it can use its engines to push the supply vessel so it'll be in position but basically after this episode the supply vessel is going to be complete it'll be functional we probably need to send up more xenon gas and methane and oxygen because we sent up the tanks only partly filled and we want to top them off before sending it to a high orbit. But other than that, uh, it'll be done. So here's the tug carrying the supplies in and it's gonna dock them on the front docking port. 
the mass of the supplies makes this a very cumbersome load. And actually, you know, we're hoping not to have to carry this much water. This is the full two years and 270 days worth of water. In theory, we're going to have water recyclers that will hopefully work this time. I don't know. Uh, when we tried them last time, the Kerbalism water recyclers didn't seem to work. I'm hoping that something got fixed, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, hopefully we won't actually need that much water. And we won't be carrying that much water on the, on the main ship. So we're going to be taking a bit of a risk. We'll test out whether the water recycler actually works, but ultimately the amount of water we carry on the Mars transfer vehicle number two is going to be mm, on the order of six to nine months, and then we'll have to recycle to get the rest. We'll see if that works out for us before actually heading out to Mars, of course. All right, so both tugs are docked to where they need to be, finally. And that's basically it. That's the supply vessel. Uh, it doesn't need the long trusses because it doesn't have the solar panels. And it also doesn't need to generate artificial gravity. That's an important note. For the Mars transfer vehicle, even if we don't have the solar panels, we'll probably need the trusses and make a long vehicle out of it because we want to spin it in order to create artificial gravity. And also maybe there's some benefit to having the reactor far away from the Kerbals. I don't know. Anyway, we are launching here the propulsion unit for the Mars transfer vehicle number two. And by popular request, I added the reactor and the generator to this. So instead of being what it looked like on Mars transfer vehicle one, we have supplementary nuclear power. And we'll see how that works out for us. We didn't need to add uh, additional radiator panels to this, though I did do the surface mount ones. Uh, we already have radiators on Mars Transit Vehicle 2 as it is on the trusses. So here we go. This is, of course, a Sagita Super Heavy, uh, lighting the core there. Unlike the Heavy, uh, it doesn't light the core on the ground. And off go the boosters. Still lots of lag with this. I don't know. I don't know what it takes to optimize it. Really, it's not that many parts, to be honest. Really, it's not that many parts, so... Yep, physics, go figure. Okay, fairing separation. Here we go, just before first stage runs out, so rather than making another cut, I'll just let the first stage run out. You can see we've got a little truss bit there, and then the propulsion unit with the ion engines, and some ED3s as well. You know how I mentioned mistakes that would cause me to do more dockings than I should have done? Well, that little truss at the front there is partly the cause of that. Um, now, what I should have done <laughs> is taken that truss and put it directly on one of those side docking ports on the propulsion unit you see there. And then just dock the assembly to the station. That ends up being not what I do, and that the way I chose to do it ended up being a very inefficient way of doing it. I had to unlock the fuel tank. We've got a methane oxygen fuel tank that the ion engines are connected to. I had to unlock that to get enough fuel so that the Sajita upper stage could do the rendezvous business. It didn't have enough on its own even though we launched a super heavy. And of course that's because it's carrying a little bit of extra mass compared to the last time. It's got the radiators and the, uh, the reactor and generator. And here I decided to just use the ED3s. It wasn't really legit having the methane oxygen tank at the top feed the engine at the bottom because the ion engines are in the way. But I cheated a little bit, but here I just went with the ED3. Still carrying the Sajita upper stage because it's the only thing that's got a controller. I didn't want to add a controller part to the propulsion assembly. That's an extra part that we don't need and extra mass, of course. Also, I'd have to add antennas too. Anyway, so here we are. We're going to pick up that truss with this tug. And unfortunately, the orientation of the truss meant that the tug had to grab it in a way that's strictly not how these docking ports are supposed to line up. But we've had that problem before. And the reason for that is because of that weird quirk where I had problems with the docking ports not separating and I had to attach it in a certain way to ensure that they would separate. Anyway, I should have docked this truss to that propulsion unit. Instead, I decided to 
put it temporarily on a different module, a different fuel tank here, and then move it later. So this was, this added two extra dockings that I didn't really need to do in retrospect. So here's that, and then I've got the tug to go grab the propulsion unit. And here I make another mistake that caused me endless problems. Nice view of the Persian Gulf though. Um, actually very scenic altogether. In a way I regret not showing more of the maneuvers and such because uh, it still looks good. I recently tried out RVE 64K, but really the, the world still looks good even without that, to be honest. That makes it look nicer, but this is good too. The radiators there are already glowing red. Anyway, the second mistake I made was dock, uh, docking this tug to that port. I didn't. I shouldn't have done that. I should have docked it to the side port instead, because the port I docked the tug to just now is the port I want to dock it to the ship with. And after deorbiting the Sajid upper stage, I couldn't let go of it because it doesn't have its own controller and I was afraid of it going out of control or anything. And that wouldn't be a good thing to do with a reactor. So I deployed our second tug to hold on to it. But I came up with this other scheme of how to deal with it using both tugs because it's a pretty heavy payload, right? Uh, this is a very heavy load of fuel and ion engines and everything. So I decided I would use both tugs to pull it into the Mars transfer vehicle, docking this tug to one side here and then moving the other one to the other side of it. And so freeing up that docking port. And so it'll be like this. Not a bad idea, right? I mean, it gives a lot of um, control authority all around, but there is a problem, there's a glitch, basically. Uh, not my fault, to be fair but a glitch that I've encountered before and I should have remembered. And that glitch is that the RCS, when I dock two tugs to something, for reasons I don't understand, the RCS thrusters only work on one tug. Not the engines. The engines on both can work, as you'll see here. You see, all the engines are working. Just the RCS ports. Now the RCS, you can see that the fuel tank's own little RCS, uh, conformal RCS port there is firing. And it's configured the same as the ones on the tugs. So I don't know what the heck is going on there. So realizing that, I had to undock this, dock it the way I should have docked it in the first place, uh, which is this way around. This actually entailed a little bit of risk because this one was the one that had the RCS ports actually working, the other one didn't. And so, yeah. Also, because on the other the other tug uh, isn't really lined up with the center of mass at all, this um, propulsion assembly wiggled quite a lot while I was trying to dock. I cut out most of that. But now, finally, I've got this tug grabbed onto that in the way it ought to have been in the first place, and I used the ED3 engines to help with getting it over to the Mars transfer vehicle and slowly gingerly line up this heavy load with that docking port. You can see a reaction wheel there, one of the additions. So numerous differences between Mars transfer vehicle 2 and Mars transfer vehicle 1. One, we have an extra methane oxygen tank, lots more methane and oxygen. We have the generator and the reactor, those are new. And um, we have fewer tugs. We'll, we'll only have the tugs in the back, none in the front. And we have the reaction wheels. Well, one reaction wheel. It's not a whole lot, to be honest. It doesn't turn it very quickly. We only have uh, one truss on here right now. We'll need one of, another one of these adapter trusses. We also need the Quest airlock and its own supply, uh, the supplies for this vessel. I'll have to decide exactly how many supplies we will carry. And of course, on that assembly with the supplies and the quest airlock, we will also have the water recycler. And again, hopefully that'll work. And then on the opposite side, we'll have some sort of lander. And I'm thinking probably one for Phobos and Deimos first. We haven't done sufficient tests of landing stuff on Mars yet. So that'll be the first thing. And maybe we'll even have a base module on Phobos and Deimos, we'll see. 
now potentially be easier than trying to land one on Mars. Uh, tipping over would certainly not be a big problem. Anyway, so repositioning this tug now onto the other side. And then we've sort of left one tug adrift this whole time. And that's the one that goes on to that truss part. So just a temporary placement there. That's a gorgeous view. And then this tug finally gets to occupy its correct space on the Mars Transit vehicle. Though we might need to move it and have it do some tugging business before it can sort of permanently occupy this position. So again, sorry about the relatively shorter video, but we weren't testing anything new. You saw the reactor and generator sort of test from the previous episode, and it's the same numbers, the same size and everything. And uh, we've got the radiators available. So didn't really, really need to belabor that point. And it did take a long time to do all these stockings. So, well, here we are. At least the things are mostly assembled. In theory, I could boost this up, but I think it's best to add everything to it, like the airlock and all, before trying to get to high orbit. It takes a lot to try and add things to it once it's in high orbit, after all. So, we'll uh, get on with that. Also, we'll need to get some crew over to both of them to remove those uh, little docking ports that are clipping through those RCS thrusters on the methane oxygen tanks. So we'll be expecting some EVAs as well. Maybe next time we should do some of that crew stuff. It's been a while since we've seen Kerbals up here in space. So yeah, I think that will be a priority. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.